Hey, welcome to the Board Game Network. I'm going to be talking about how to play this great game called Once Upon a Time. I was introduced to this game many years ago, and it's just a great, great game. They're on their third edition now, so I went ahead and picked up the latest edition of this game. It's a storytelling card game. Uh, it plays in about 20 to 40 minutes, two to six players. Here's the different kinds of cards you have. You have character cards, thing cards, place cards, aspect, and event cards. They each have their own color. They each have their own icon in the upper left hand corner. And then you also have interrupt cards and each one has a corresponding card to the uh, the other cards next to them here. So we got an interrupt for event, aspect, place, thing, or character. So these are interrupts. These are story cards. And here's an ending card. And this is the way you want to end your story. The goal of the game is to have a handful of cards and to tell a story. And when you use something in the story that you've got a card for in your hand, you'll play that card out. And you want to be the first person to run out of cards in your hand is all you have to do. So you start off with 11 cards minus the number of players. So if you're playing a six player game, you're going to have five cards in your hand plus your ending card. So let me just grab a hand here of cards. And then I'm going to have an ending card. And so I'm trying to lead the story down this path. You'll notice the backs, the story cards, uh, the story and interrupt cards have a, a girl on the back in this edition and the ending cards have a horse and a rider on the back. So everybody gets dealt an ending and then the corresponding number of cards that they should have. And if, let's just say I'm the first player. And so I'm looking at this and I've got, this is revealed. I've got a cottage, I've got a forest, I've got long lost, and I've got dying. So these are different uh, aspects of the cards here. So let's just say, you know what, once upon a time um, there was a knight and he was traveling through the forest. And when I say the forest, I get to put the forest card out and I play that card. And that knight, as he was traveling, sees off in the distance uh, something that looks like a house. He sees some smoke coming. He travels towards the smoke and he comes across a cottage. And so he plays his cottage card. And so you see how you're playing these cards out. And, you, and he went into the cottage and there was this old man and this old man was dying. And so he plays his dying card out. And this, this old man had a uh, related a story about how he was once in love and his, uh, his sweetheart uh, who was long lost. Oh, look at that. I played a long lost card and he wanted the knight to go find her uh, because he wanted to give his cottage to his long lost love. Now when you're playing these cards, these have to be important to the story. They can't just be, well, I saw a cottage in the distance and there was a frog dying on the step and you can't do that. It has to be important to the story. It has to be its own sentence. You don't just want to say, well at the forest there was a cottage and the person was dying a lot. You know, you want to develop the storyline. And you need to develop and aim the story towards your ending because if the ending doesn't match the story, it won't be a good story and the other players won't like it and you won't get to successfully win the game. My story ending says, which proves that a heart that is brave and true will always triumph in the end. So I want to try to lead the story that direction. Okay. Now the way interrupt cards work is there's two different ways you can play an interrupt card. If the story it uses the words at the top of the interrupt card, then you can play your interrupt card and take over the story. So if somebody else had, you know, I don't know, the king card in their hand, and I said, well, you know, the knight was traveling through the forest because the king had sent him on a mission, and you had the king card in your hand, you could say, 
I'm taking over the story. And then you start developing the story and start playing cards out of your hand. Now once you have been interrupted, somebody has taken over the story from you, you need to draw a card and put it in your hand. So you're getting new cards. Uh, when you lose the story, you draw a card. So that's one way of being interrupted. The other way of being interrupted is you'll notice each of these interrupts have a, a, a color that matches the color of the original card. So this is an event which is purple along the side. This is an interrupt for an event that's purple. It shows the same icon here. And so if somebody plays, let's say somebody plays this breaks, which is an event, so something broke in the story and you had the interrupt for an event, they play that. You can actually play at that point and it, you ignore the, the word at the top, you play the interrupt for the event and you can take over the story and that person would draw a card. So the goal was just to run out of cards in your hand and tell the ending of the story. So this is a great, great game. It is fantastically fun to play. You get two or three or five or six players in here that are dynamic and want to tell stories and have an imagination. And these cards help you with your imagination, telling you a story. Uh, Pick up this game. I can't recommend this game more highly. I've played it off and on for since it came out, 20 years or something. I don't even remember how long ago it came out, but it has been a while. And I've got an older version of this game that is beat up. Uh, so I would highly recommend this game. Put out by Atlas Games. Make sure you tune into all of our videos here at the Board Game Network and we'll teach you how to play these games. We'll teach you what, we'll tell you what games to pick up and what are good games for the family, for friends, and for uh, just game nights in general.